I'm about to give you the most relevant and actionable advice you will receive on generative AI. Come with me if you want to live. You will learn how a company launched its AI solution in 30 days and created an entirely new business opportunity. Best of all, the CEO is going to tell you how you can do the same. Welcome to episode 16 of our Generative AI and LLM strategy series. Today you're going to meet Guy Savan, co-founder and CEO of Vericant, a company he sold to ETS, the world's largest private, non-profit educational testing organization. Guy and I had a Zoom call in August about ways Vericant could use generative AI in its product offering. I was fairly shocked to see that Vericant released a solution a month later. I initially assumed that this was a different initiative at Vericant, but I soon realized it was inspired by our conversation. Guy built and deployed a generative AI solution with a few hours of work over a few weeks. Guy and I break down what he did step by step so you can do the same. We discuss his inspiration, how he organized his data, how he built it without any programming, how he used his team to refine it, how he did it part-time without dedicated resources, and most importantly, how this one small first project launched an entirely new business opportunity for his company. Guy and I also discuss how to overcome fear and anxiety doing something new, as well as your opportunities from being the first to deploy generative AI. Here are the two lessons you should take from this conversation. First, it should be absolutely clear that you and your company can do this. As you will soon see, Guy is incredibly humble and goes to great lengths to describe how you can overcome your concerns and constraints just as he did. Second, this conversation should serve as a wake-up call. If you or your company are still thinking about generative AI and waiting for the perfect clarity before doing anything, understand that your best opportunities are slipping away because your competitors, whether they are the companies or colleagues interviewing for your dream job, are taking action. And the gap between the talkers and the doers is growing every day. Be a doer. And with that, let's meet Guy Savan. Guy, thank you so much for making the time. Can you start us off by giving us a little summary of what Vericant does? Sure. And thanks, Kevin, for inviting. This is all a lot of fun and happy to share. Um, so Vericant is a um, third-party video interview company. We work with high schools and universities to help them with their admissions and help the admissions teams make better decisions by providing a video interview of each of their applicants. Um, so that they can get a better holistic view of the student and also better understand their English uh, spoken capabilities, especially for international students. And so what we do is we we make what previously wasn't easy to scale. We make interviews scalable so that it can eventually become part of the required part of the application process. So when you and I first started talking about LLMs and generative AI, uh, I think it was around August, and like a month later, you had actually implemented something in your application. Can you please give us a recap of your experience and how you were able to put together something useful so quickly? I watched this one video which talks about dealing with LLM hallucinations. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't because I was interested in hallucinations, it's because it's like I was curious to know a little bit more about what, you know, how you're dealing with them. And and the video is actually, it's like five minutes long. I recommend people to watch it anyway, if you're trying to build anything here. Um, and what it has is inside the video, you talk about, let just make an evaluation framework. I don't know what that's what you call it, but evaluation framework to then decide and help evaluate whether the outputs from each of the AI LLM usages in your particular use case as a company, whether they're usable or not. So basically what we did is we, we have an interview, which is usually a conversation, which would be around 15 minutes. And we wanted to pull out and analyze what happens in that conversation um, and do simple things like give a short summary, 
pull out the key points and pull out the key topics that were discussed. And we have a lot of more things coming, but those are the how we decided to start. Um, and the idea is that once we have these things in writing, then the admissions teams could, you know, process an interview or at least understand what the contents of an interview in maybe 20 to 30 seconds instead of 15 minutes. So it's a, a huge advantage. Before continuing with the interview, I wanted to show you the OpenAI playground Guy used to build his prompts. The playground allows you to interact with the GPT-4 model just as you would do from your application. On the left is the system message. This is where Guy pasted the prompts from his Google Sheet. I typed in some basic instructions similar to the ones he's about to show you. I then pasted an interview into the user message section on the right and the LLM processes the results. Once the results are complete, Guy copied these results back to his Google Sheet. He then evaluated them and edited the prompts on the left. It really is that simple. So first of all, I had to optimize the, the, the original system prompt until I felt it was good enough. So these are my instructions. You are an assistant, like you are assisting an admissions officer at a yep. U.S. educational institution. Your primary task is to digest an interview transcript of a potential candidate and produce the concise summary. So yep. that that's that's the beginning. And then there's, there's a lot more details like don't do this, do that, refer mm -hmm. to the student by their name, a lot of things. Don't be wordy, don't use like silly flowery language, which I'm always telling yeah. it. <laughs> <to do>. Exactly. <laughs> and so bit by bit, you know, I, I built that prompt based mm -hmm. on testing it and seeing all the mistakes myself. Yes. And after a certain level, I got to a point where like, okay, this is good. I'm seeing like a lot of good outputs. Right, so so I, I have, what I did is I took each, each input um, which means each transcript, and I ran it through the same exact prompt three times, mm -hmm. and I got three outputs for each one. I used that to then get a evaluation tool. I mean, I made an evaluation tool in another sheet. This, all this stuff sounds, you know, framework, tools, sheet, sounds complicated, but it's just like, <laughs> it's just Google Sheets. What you can see here, these this output number one, two, and three, these are the three outputs for that first transcript. So mm -hmm. this up one, two, and three. So the job of someone on my team then was to go through and for each video, watch the video, read the transcript, and then comment on each of the outputs that were produced. So output one here is there the the my team members or mine evaluation of this first output from the first transcript. And I asked what I told them is you know, give it a, give it kind of like a quantitative you know, score, yep. just a, a number. So we have a way to kind of look at it and, you know, to say based on the, like, what's the quality? Is it amazing? Is it good? Is it just passable? You know, still usable, but we don't find it to be great mm -hmm. or it's unsatisfactory, which means that if we get any of these, we, we just can't use them and therefore yep. it's an it issue and that's it. And then, um, and then also give me comments on all, you know, Tell me if it was good, but also tell me what are the specific issues you ran into. So this is my first round, and you can see there's, you know, lots of dark greens, but also some greens, some yellow. If we scroll down, we'll see there's a couple of red. Yep. So this is not good enough. And I took all this tons of feedback and then go, went back to the drawing board and redid the prompt. And I suddenly like the same same interviews were evaluated through another framework. And suddenly you can see lots of green, all green here. There was in the second round here, this is there's only one which was passable, um, which was yellow and no reds. So that was good. That's basically all it is. And at the end of the day, you just take that prompt and then give it to the engineering team and tell them, okay, plug it in. <laughs> This is the portal that the admissions teams log into to receive all of their interviews. And this is the page of one of the students that interviewed. And we conduct interviews with humans. We have a human mm -hmm. doing the interview. The AI component that we added is called AI Insights. And it's just basically what's in this tab. We, we could watch the whole thing and figure out what it's about. Or we could, if we don't have that much time, we can just, you know, go through and 
read the summary now because this AI insights includes the summary, which I showed, which is what we were working on in the yep. spreadsheet, um, which is, you know, it's just a few sentences. You can read this in 15 seconds or so. Here are the key points. I love the fact that you you launch this quickly and you but you have all of the disclaimers of you know it's beta feedback labeling oh, yeah. it AI insights. Yes, it, it's exactly what we were going after. We had a lot of discussion about what to call it, whether to call it something with like a you know the Verikant assistant or something like that. Right. But then we specifically like what you just said. We specifically called it AI something, and in yes. our case, AI insights, because at the moment. You know, I don't know how much longer this will last, but at the moment there's more forgiveness for an AI generated, you know, solution, right? And the good thing about this process is, um, since you're a CEO, you've got lots of free time. You you never have meetings, right? You never have employee issues, of course. and you and you have an engineering team that had nothing else to do, and exactly. and, you had, and your staff had nothing else. So you had oodles of free time and resources to get this done. Is that Absolutely. is that how your 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 work is? <laughs> I'm sure a lot of leaders could empathize with that. We're just sitting on the beach, <laughs> flying around, not doing nothing. <laughs> In the end of the day, it didn't take that much time. It just took a few hours over a few weeks and, and that's it. And, you know, and because we created the framework, then other people could do the, the chunk of the more difficult work or not the more time consuming work, which is evaluating all the outputs yep. in more detail. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's really not once you get into it and understand what you're doing, um, then building out the solution is actually pretty easy. There is also an element of a lot of, there's a lot of unknown going into this kind of thing because mm -hmm. most people have never done it before. Yeah. And when you've done never done anything before, something before, then the your estimated time of it could be like a very big range. You could be like, well, it's going to take me two hours or it could take me three weeks. I don't really know, right? right. So you have that kind of fear of going into it. Um, but I found that especially with this, you know, just some kind of framework and some other thought processes that happened over time that that like I, it just reduced I think it increased my accuracy of the prediction of how long it takes yeah it just gave me the confidence to just jump into it and now after having done it once I'm I mean I've proven that it's very easy yeah right and so going forward I'm that's kind of I'm totally aligned with your advice of just jumping into it and getting things started I just dove in to use it. And once I started using it, it became concrete. Like what it like getting a summary of an interview, yeah. right? That's a very concrete thing. And so like it took a while to figure out that that's one thing that we could do just to mm -hmm. imagine. But you know, playing with many different tools, I saw there's a lot of summary tools. So okay, like let's just do our own summary. And so I I went in there and after doing these things, it actually evolved my bigger vision of what this is yeah, right it's exactly. my vision because i got the ground on it i'm like what are we actually doing here we're getting summary we got topics we got like key points and so what we're actually doing is we're scaling the admissions team's abilities to process interviews yep and so exactly. once I, I got from the very simple example of a summary to like this big vision of like we're scaling their ability to process interviews which is something we've never said before we've mm -hmm. always been scaling interviews we can do tens of thousands of interviews for you you don't have to do them but we always we really didn't have a solution for the other side where they have to get all these interviews and they have to like watch them all right so but but i didn't get that kind of that wording of the the vision or the bigger concept until I actually did the actual smaller like on the ground stuff and I yes. it sort of clicked and so I think I'm definitely a proponent of just like getting get your hands dirty a little bit even if it's a very minor feature it just puts everything together because now that I know yes. we can do this then I know we can do I have a whole host of other features that we're still going to develop because I have a theme of scaling you know I have a bigger theme of what the AI could do for us which I didn't have until I started doing stuff on the ground myself. I think it's one of the things that at this day and age, there's a bit of a, there's an opportunity to be kind of the first in your yes. industry or the yes. first in your industry. We did get it out there first by far. Um, and we're very happy about that. And that's kind of like, I think that's an opportunity for everyone these days. I, I think it's very easy. Don't, don't like, 
don't, no need to hand wave and explain how cool it is. Just do it. Just do show, it. Yes. Show how yeah. good it is. Yeah. Right, we're getting a lot into the advice side here. So I guess I'll just long another one. It's like, I think it's also that there is, when <laughs> technology is transformative and new, you get tremendous leverage of your time by doing something early because nobody has a standard. Nobody has expectations. Just being the first can set you up. And I did that when the internet came out. I changed my career. It doesn't have to be something related to my industry or what we're doing. I just, I'm very curious to connect with people who are also building or trying to, or thinking about building stuff using the latest AI tools, specifically LLMs if possible, but even in general, because I just want to, you know, exchange notes, practitioner to practitioner and just hear about what's going on there. Even if they haven't started dark practitioners yet, like I wasn't a month ago, <laughs> um, <Right>. but <laughs> I would love to, that, so that's kind of, you know, if there's people who want to just connect on that, I'd be very, very happy just to, you know, um, talk about stuff. Thanks, Kevin. It's, it's been, it was fun. Definitely fun. Thanks awesome. very much. Great catch it up, guy. Take care.